Today we're going to be talking about optimizing files for a boot disk. Let's get started. First we'll take a look at what is on a common boot disk for DOS version 6.22. To do that we'll use the dir command. We will focus that on the A drive and we'll use the switch W for a wide display and we are going to use the order by name. Here we have the files from the boot disk. The boot disk is intended to allow you to boot up a system, of course, and give you some basic tools for maybe troubleshooting or partitioning a hard drive, formatting it, getting ready to put an operating system on it. So it does give you some basic tools besides just getting you to the DOS prompt. These tools are maybe not the best or most powerful tools that are available. They're certainly not the most efficient when it comes to space. But that's what we're going to talk about today. So this one does still have have 51k free. This is an untouched disk. Nothing's been removed or swapped or anything like that. There are actually some files that come on these disks that may not really be useful every time you boot the PC. For example, there's a program that comes on here called QBasic. It lets you write in the basic programming language. It also has a help file that's pretty large in size, along with the help file for the edit program, which we may not need to reference every time we use the PC. So now I would like to swap the disk here. And we'll take a look at a boot disk that I created with some various replacement files that you can find on the internet. Thanks to DOS key, I can press the up arrow on the keyboard and it shows us the command that we last typed, it's fantastic. So a little bit different, uh, we have about 658k left on the disk, which is good. These are 1.44 megabyte floppy disks. That is their manufacturing specification. After the disk has been formatted, you have about 1.38 megabytes worth of space. On this boot disk here that I customized, there are a couple files that I removed, including QBasic, like we talked about, Edit, because that was replaced with t.exe over there on the right. It is a very small program for editing files, which is preferable to the default edit app because that can be rather large, especially on a boot disk like this. I have also removed the cd1234.sys files that you can still see above there. The reason for this is because they were replaced by a much more efficient CD-ROM driver that is cd-rom.sys. The mouse.com and mouse.sys files were also replaced with cute mouse or CT mouse. Also the Microsoft CD extension, MSCDEX, that has been replaced with the SHCDX33F.com. So this boot disk actually has all the same features as the other one. It just uses significantly less space on the disk, which is good. So we can actually put more files on here as we move forward. This is more to focus on replacing some of the applications that come on a standard boot disk. Now I would like to restart the PC and we'll watch it boot with the boot disk in place. As you can see, there are some different lines here than before. Our CD-ROM drivers are different. That's why it's giving some different results. There's some credits right there in the file about who created them. And we also have our cute mouse that installed there at the bottom and says it's on a PS2 port. The mouse driver can do either a serial mouse or a PS2 mouse, possibly a USB mouse if the BIOS were set in the legacy mode. It tries to emulate the PS2 interface so DOS can still read that a mouse is connected to the PC. In this case, Cute Mouse is giving us a little more detail, saying that it is on the PS2 port. 
Another thing to note about these replacement files is that some of them, like Cute Mouse and the CD-ROM drivers, can be stopped once they're started, so they're not constantly sitting in memory. You do have the option to unload some of these things if you were going to use a program that doesn't have the mouse. Maybe you didn't know that when you were starting the PC and you made a selection for the standard boot that included the mouse or CD-ROM support. You do now have the option to turn those off before you launch the program, which gives you a little more versatility with these apps opposed to the default DOS ones. So let's open the T application and we'll take a look at autoexec.bat first. Some things you'll notice that are different off the bat, no mouse support in this version of the program. There is an indicator where the beginning and the end of a file is. There's some credits down at the bottom for who created the application. So as you might expect, the line for loading the CD driver and the mouse is a little bit different than the one that we have been using. Now these will also work with our main installation, they don't need to be on the floppy disk, but the point of having them on the floppy disk is for space reasons, we don't necessarily have that same space limitation on the hard drive. There are several editors. This isn't the only one out there that's relatively small and powerful. You may not like this particular editor and that's okay. There's plenty to choose from and they're all plenty good. They accomplish the same task. So as we don't have mouse support, we will take a look at the config sys file this way. Essentially the same thing as before, just the CD driver is a little bit different. It's calling a different driver for the CD-ROM. And lastly, I want to take a quick look at the memory management aspect of things to see how that worked out. So these are much smaller than the programs that we have been using. 